We left to the awards and he was starving, so we stopped at Subway, like in my gown and in his thing, and we stopped at Subway to get, we ate there for like 30 minutes because we were too early. Oh, that's very funny. You think she's oh, kidding? Yeah. She's not. Funny. There she not is in kidding. Subway. <laughs> Scarfing it down with Tony. Did you go out to eat anywhere while you were here? Subway. Subway! Play hard. Play hard. Eat fresh. Eat fresh. Eat fresh. Eat fresh. Race hard. Eat fresh. Jared Fogle represents probably the single most painful downfall ever for an American spokesperson. In case you don't know, he became an integral part of Subway's marketing due to his significant weight loss. He wasn't a traditional celebrity, but rather became famous for being the face of the company. Unfortunately, the ugly mold hiding in Jared's metaphorical sub manifested itself when it was revealed he was a pedophile. Seriously, what is it with people and wanting to Epstein kids? The rules are simple, just leave them alone and don't be a gross human being. Anyways, in 2015, he was arrested by the FBI and sentenced to 15 years and 8 months in prison. This is the disastrous downfall of Jared Fogle. In April 1999, Fogle's former dorme at Indiana University, Ryan Coleman, published an article about his weight loss. He was a 425-pound senior whose obesity was ironic considering his father was a doctor. Surprisingly, he shed a whopping 245 pounds just by eating a foot-long veggie and a 6-inch turkey sub from Subway every day for a year. Notably, neither sandwich contained either mayo or or cheese and his diet averaged around 1,000 calories a day. That's pretty low, so I'm not surprised he was losing weight like he was on a hunger strike. Thanks to the article, another one about him was published in Men's Health magazine. This led to a Chicago subway owner discovering Jared's inspiring tale and hiring him for an ad campaign. They trialed one which did extremely well largely because he was so relatable. Jared wasn't the typical celebrity spokesperson who endorsed a product they didn't even consume, like Tom Brady who doesn't even eat bread. Because you, you got, got a refresh? to be fresh. It's to eat fresh, refresh the Subway. And they're refreshing everything from how they make it to how they bake it to how they bring it to you. This new Turkey Cali Fresh is incredible. Do you even eat bread? Steph, it's a commercial. Rather, he was a wholesome person who tried to help people by sharing his story. He became an overnight sensation. After Fogel's Chicago debut, he immediately received multiple interview requests from Oprah, Fox News, and USA Today. Catapulted to fame, Fogel was featured in national television commercials and attended sponsored meetups. His most memorable campaign was raising up an old pair of his size 60 pants that now required two of him to fit into. The ad was palpable and spoke to many Americans who wanted to live a healthier lifestyle. And while Fogel proved to be quite the cash cow, after his 300 commercials, Subway's annual revenue tripled to $11.5 billion in 2011 from around $3.3 billion in 1998. Naturally, Jared got pretty famous. He was memed on South Park, appeared in two Sharknado movies, and one on the WWE. Now, Fogel was also very passionate about giving back to the community. So much so, he created the Jared Foundation to help combat childhood obesity. As part of the mission, he would travel to different elementary schools across the United States to talk about healthier eating habits. In the eyes of his home state of Indiana, he was a celebrity. He took care of his wife and two children, spoke at fundraisers, and uplifted local spots. However, Jared's interest in children was much more sinister than he led on. It turns out he used his fame to gain influence so he could sexually abuse them. The foundation was just a means to gain access in an unsuspecting way. It was truly horrific and no one was the wiser. That was until 2007 when he casually told a radio host named Rochelle Herman Walrun that he found young girls attractive. He told me that he was, he thought that middle school girls were so hot. This alarmed her so she immediately went to the FBI but was told she needed more evidence. So, like a hero, she got to work and secretly recorded the pervert for about four years. That's right, four years. She could have graduated with a college degree with the amount of time she spent on Fogel. I mean, she should have been the director of the goddamn FBI. In order to get the recording, she would often wear a wire. And while they were absolutely 100% grade A disgusting,
In addition, Jared requested to see Rochelle's kids naked. You could practically hear him salivating and getting turned on in the phone call. He was truly a predator. Taking it a step further, he not only asked if he could put a hidden camera in her kid's room, but also if her son or daughter would be better. What if they put a camera in your kid's room? Would they be okay with that? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Would you rather have it in your son or your daughter's room? Oh, I don't know. That would be, you know... Which one do you think would be better? I don't know. So what's your kids do you think I like better seeing naked, your son or your daughter? What a horrendous question to ask a mother. To make matters worse, Fogel tried to set up a party with Rochelle's children, their friends, and siblings. Jared wanted me to plan a party. Wow. Well, he just yes. wanted to come down and have a fish in a barrel. That's correct. Set me up, a target-rich environment, and I'll come down for a party. That's exactly what he wanted me to do, and he wanted me to set up my children, but along with their friends and their friend's siblings. Sadly, the experience made her a broken person as pedophilia was a deeply concerning subject and negatively affected her own relationships. His mother now says the ordeal has harmed her relationship with her own children. They were without their mother for some time. I became a broken person, and to reform that relationship with my children to this day is very difficult. However, Rochelle's efforts didn't lead to Jared's incarceration. Even with the recordings, the FBI was still unable to charge Jared due to lack of evidence. In 2014, though, that changed after the executive director of Jared's charitable organization, Russell Taylor, was arrested for producing child pornography. You see, Taylor asked to have sex with a woman's horse and offered to send her child-related sexual content. He also sent her an image of a woman engaging in bestiality. Terrified, she reported him to the Indiana State Police, which led to them raiding his home. As a result, they found videos he made of nude children aged 11 to 16. In a plea deal, Taylor admitted to sending some of the videos to Fogel. This was a major breakthrough in the case as there was finally enough proof to launch an investigation. In July 2015, the FBI and Indiana State Police raided Jared Zinesville, Indiana home and seized his computers and personal documents. They found tons of child pornography in a document that revealed he had sex with a 17-year-old at the Plaza Hotel in New York. And when referring to victims, he reportedly stated the younger the better. He even allegedly offered to pay prostitutes a finder's fee to scout kids for him. What a real stand-up guy. These were the texts he sent. I just landed in Vegas. How was your flight, honey? It was good. Did you find me some young girls or boys? No, I've been looking to. Can you find me some? How much will you give me for doing it? Depends on if they can prove their age. If they can and you get me 16 or below, I'll give you 400 at least. So I have a proposition for you. And it's something I would pay you very well if you were able to help. Okay, what is it? Let me know. Do you have any access to any young girls like 15 or 16? Why, baby? Because it's what I crave. I would hook you up nicely if you did. As a result, the FBI charged him with possessing and distributing child pornography and traveling across state lines to have sex with minors. In addition, they subpoenaed text messages he had with Cindy Mills, a Subway franchisee who Jared was having a sexual relationship with. In them, Fogel talked about sexually abusing children, informed her to sell herself for sex on Craigslist, and asked her to arrange for him to have sex with their 16-year-old cousin. Ultimately, he was sentenced to 15 years and 18 months in prison. He is also required to register as a sex offender upon release. Naturally, Subway immediately fired him as a spokesperson and were left with the catastrophic damage the situation caused to their brand. Jared's wife Katie, whom he cheated on with Cindy Mills, quickly divorced him. He was worth $15 million at the time and agreed to give her $7 million. Interestingly, Katie claimed she knew nothing of Jared's illicit behavior until the moment the FBI knocked on their door. That's how I found it. Was the FBI knocking on your door? Yes. Yeah. So before that, you knew nothing? No, I knew nothing about his involvement in anything. They walked in, and you're just in shock. Do you even understand what was happening? No. No. Beyond the lives of the children, his personal relationships, and the Subway brand he negatively impacted, he also destroyed the community around him. His fellow whose years felt betrayed and disgusted. The very people who once asked for his autograph now want nothing to do with him. The famous Atwater and South Woodlawn Subway he first ate at has since shut down. 
Funny enough, not even the other inmates at Jared's prison liked him. He allegedly paid other prisoners to protect him and exuded an air of arrogance. So one day, a fellow inmate beat up Fogel so bad he was left with a bleeding nose and swollen face. That's where Steve Nigg had a problem. He's serving a 15-year sentence for a federal gun crime. He told his brother Fogel's sentence and demeanor inside the prison walls sent him over the edge. When you run through the, the yard in the prison with special privileges and you hire people, maybe the inmates to back you up to make sure nobody touches you, that's even worse. In November 2021, he wrote a letter to the New York Post stating he royally screwed up and took inspiration from the Shawshank Redemption by learning to make the best of his situation. Fogel mentioned he passed the time by watching football and working out. Overall, it seemed Jared the Subway Guy duped us all. He was one of the most famous normal guys of all time. He was a huge inspiration to many and served as the face of a multi-billion dollar company for over a decade. However, he lived a double life hidden from everyone, including his wife and two kids. Fortunately, he is still in prison and serves as a cautionary tale for the dark nature that lies within people. I can only pray for the people he hurt and hope he never abuses a child again.